codes of today with, uh, with people in, j in jail for an enormous amounts of time, sometimes for incredible, you know, I stole a television set when I was 19 and I'm, you know, I'm going to spend the rest of my life in a who's gal right. or I smoked a joint, you know, right. using, using exactly. the war on drugs, which was a, right. which was a, is a, a colossal um, error. I, that's putting it nicely, right? It's a colossal meanness, uh, the, the uh, cruelty that that has wreaked. Uh, and uh, when, uh, I mean, uh, I would assume, you know, since, since racism at, in, in is, is, hold, is there to hold up an, an unequal distribution of wealth, that it, who is on top and who is on bottom could easily change. I mean, who is the desired race of the weak and who is the less desired race of the weak could, you know, it doesn't change in a week. It takes centuries and centuries, right? But it, as, long as, that, as long as that concept is in place, uh, it, it, it can change, right? It can, it can. I, I, I mean, personally, I don't see black people ever being on the top without there being, you know, a revolution essentially in the United States, because whites, you know, philosophically are so, and educationally, and in every single way, you know, that it, the mindset, it, it's, uh, you know, as I said in the beginning, it was like it's almost in the American DNA that people who are not white and who are not white males, basically, are lesser. And there's always the degree of lesser. Um, and you know, so unless something profound changes, I don't see that ever really, e I, I mean, I think things are, there'll be race riots. I mean, there have been race riots. And a lot of them have been on the part of whites. I mean, in 1919, there was a, a race riot in Tulsa, Oklahoma, because you have these black people who, uh, it's called Black Wall Street. And, you know, essentially the black community was doing pretty well for the most part. And the white community, which had come back from the war, and nobody was doing well during this period really, had no jobs, they were living, you know, hand to mouth. They resented the fact that blacks were doing, you know, pretty well under the circumstances and they just rioted. and burned down people's homes, killed people, shot them, and, you know, drove a, a number of people out of the area. Um, and that's really, and that was happening actually throughout 1919. There was a lot of riots on the part of whites because after the war, you know, when the, con the economy collapses, because you don't have people who are, you know, making guns and all kinds of things that you need for war. The economy bas basically collapses, and you have all these people coming back who are seeking jobs. And if the jobs aren't there, then all that racism that is, you know, part of American society gets whipped up by, you know, people who need to get rid of the perceived enemy, which, you know, at that point was the blacks. And I don't see that, you know, ever flipping over. I, I see, you know, m my hope is is that I see blacks and whites and working class people getting together and getting rid of capitalism and this, you know, need to pit people against each other or, you know, the environment. It, it's being ravaged. The capitalists are ravaging the environment and everything is about profit in this society. And so, you know, rather than using solar energy, you have oil and fuel, all the dirtiest of the dirty, in order to make the immediate profit, you know, the billions of dollars that they rake in. And unless those people, you know, the 0 0.1 are, you know, forced out, then um, I think things are, and racism. I mean, every day I, I listen to a news report and some other, somebody was just shot on, on the subway just a couple of days ago by this corrections officer. Yes. Uh, it would, they got into an argument, the guy was walking off the subway and he was shot. You know, because it's so much a part of how whites, especially l law enforcement, see black people. And they think that they're entitled, just like in Ferguson. That guy, his argument, with Aaron Wilson's argument was that, I felt like a little being next to this big hulky guy and therefore I was frightened. And that's what's inculcated in the American mentality. That's inculcated in the American educational system. And you know, when you have an inequality in terms of how much money you're gonna provide for schools, you're gonna have people who are in poor communities who are less educated than people who are in wealthy communities, and then therefore, 
they have the right to lead because they're more educated and smarter and, you know, et cetera. So in this way, I mean, this is uh, two examples of, uh, I, I, I had a uh, friendship with a woman from Sarajevo at the beginning mm -hmm. of that war. And she got a phone call, come home, because, you know, we got to worry about the Muslims. And she said, we never had to worry about the Muslims. My brother-in-law is Muslim. I don't understand what this is all about. It was so easy to right. open up that the fissure that existed, you know, uh, there was enough of a fissure. And e even though they had lived together fairly right. peacefully, it, it was easy if you, wanted, if you wanted to lead people to get to say, oh, no, you, you, you really do have to worry about these people. They're, they're going to hurt you.